In Dijkstra's algorithm, we look to find the shortest path from one vertex to another. We do this through making a series of labels attached to each vertex, and so we need to bring up a box. This is the standard design for the box that we would put at each vertex. What we have is the vertex name in the first small box. We have the labeling number, that is the order that the vertices have been given a permanent label in the second box the permanent label in the third box, and then any temporary or working labels in the bottom box. We need one of these for each vertex, so you can add these to a diagram, or if possible it's better to redraw it with all of those boxes already added in. You can see I've done that here, and instead of a circle for the vertex we have the box in place. You can add them next to the vertices though if you prefer. Bring up the reminder so that we can see exactly what is going into each space for the box for each vertex. So we start looking at A. This is our first vertex, so we're going to add the label number of 1. This is the first vertex that we're doing. This is given a permanent label of 0. What this means is that A is a distance of 0 from A. We're going to be adding distances for each of the permanent labels as we go on. Our next stage is to add the distance from A to each of the vertices it is connected to directly. So we can get from A to B in a distance of 17, to C in a distance of 18, and D in a distance of 15. They're the only ones we need to consider as A is not directly connected to any other vertices. We then stop looking at A. That one has been permanently labelled and so we look for the vertex that has the smallest temporary label. In this case it is D with 15. So we give that a number label, this is the second vertex we are working on, and we make its temporary label into the permanent label. What we're saying when we do that is it is not possible to get to D in a shorter distance than 15 from A. B and C it might be possible dependent on the other distances that we have, but we know that D can only be done in 15. D is connected to F. We can get there in a distance of 29. That's the 15 to D plus the 14 for the edge between them. Similarly, we can get to I in 32. That is the 15 plus the 17 to get to I. So at the moment, what we're saying is that the shortest distance that we know we can get to I in is 32. There are lots of ways of getting there in more but certainly we can get there in 32. That's the smallest that we know about at the moment. D is now complete, there are no other vertices attached to it, and we move on to our next smallest. Out of B, C, F and I, B has the smallest temporary label. This gets the label number of 3, and we make its permanent label be 17. B is connected to G, which we can get there in 44, and E, which we can get there in 35. No others connected to B, so we move on to our next. C is our next vertex with the smallest value as a temporary label. This is vertex number 4 that we have worked on, and its permanent label becomes 18. C is connected to E. We can get there, though, in 33. This replaces the temporary label that we had at E. Yes, we could get there in 35 by going from A to B to E, but we now know we can get there in a shorter distance. So we replace the temporary label of 35 with 33. Similarly, for C to F, 18 plus 10 is 28. So we can get there in a shorter distance as well. C is now complete. Looking at the vertices without a permanent label, we see that F has the smallest value. This is our fifth, and so it has the permanent label of 28. F is connected to E, and we can replace the 33 with 32. Again, what we're saying is we know that we can get from A to E in 32. It's also connected to H, so we can get there in 45. The 28 plus the 17 gives us 45. 
and for f to i, 28 plus 13 would give us 41, but we already have 32 in that place. So we don't replace the temporary label. We can already get to i in 32, so why would we want to get there in 41? Remember, we're looking for the shortest distance. So we leave the 32 exactly where it is. f is now complete. We look for the smallest one. And we notice that we have two vertices that have 32. It doesn't matter which one of the two we choose. I'm going to choose i. i is the sixth vertex that we are labeling, so its permanent label is 32. We can go from i to h in 35. 32 plus 3 is 35, which beats the 45, so we cross that one out and replace it with the 35. We can also get to j in 45. Now, even though we are trying to get from a to j, just because we've got to j at this point does not mean we've finished. Remember, we're trying to find the shortest distance. We don't yet know whether that is the shortest distance. It may turn out to be. We'll find out shortly. But i is now complete. The next lowest is e with that 32 we saw earlier. This is the seventh vertex to be labelled. Its permanent label is 32. We can get to g now in 38, so we replace that. And we can get to h, well, 32 plus 12 is 44. We've got 35 already there, so we're going to leave the 35 there. We know we can get there in 35, which is shorter, so we'll leave that one alone. E is complete. Our next lowest vertex without a permanent label is h on 35. This is vertex 8. Permanent label becomes 35. And we can't do any better for j at the moment. The 35 plus 11 would be 46. That's no good. We'll leave the 45. That's h complete. We move to g. This is our ninth vertex. 38 is its permanent label. And again, we can't beat that 45. 38 plus 15 is more than 45, so we leave that. And we've only got one vertex left. It's j. This is the tenth vertex to be labelled and its permanent label is 45. That's our completed diagram for Dijkstra's algorithm. Remember what we're trying to do is get from A to J in the shortest distance. We now know that we can get from A to J in a distance of 45. That is the permanent label of our destination vertex. It would be nice to know how we got there. So what we do is we start from the destination, that is J, we say, how did we get there in 45? Well, if you trace back along the edges to see which vertex got us there in 45, you may be able to remember, but it was going from i to j. 32 plus 13 gave us 45. If we compare the other ones, h would be 35 plus 11. That's not 45. And g would be 38 plus 15. That's not 45. How did we get to i? Well, we've got to get there in 32. It's not going to be from f, 28 plus 13 is not 32, but d going 15 plus 17 does get us there in 32. And how did we get to d in 15? Well, hopefully you can see straight away that we went straight from a. You might notice that I built up the route backwards. I started at the end and worked through to the uh, starting vertex, and I wrote them in the order as I was doing them so that now I can read the root A, D, I, J to get me from A to J. Dijkstra's algorithm is quite simple once you get used to it. There's lots of numbers that you have to be very careful of, making sure that you are checking all unpermanently labelled vertices and checking to see which one is currently the smallest. But if you can work your way through all of that, it is reasonably straightforward. Be careful when you're finding the root Sometimes, depending on the graph, you may have two ways of getting, say, the 45. You do need to make sure that you are choosing a valid path. Other than that, good luck with using Dijkstra's algorithm.